This is Wild on 7th, your favorite wild podcast. Did you guys see this? This is unbelievable. What is that all about, Kinger? Get in here for the real thing. Like, let's get weird. Maybe I blacked out trying to figure out what was going on. Doubt, worry, fear, because that's what we're breaking the mold on here. Welcome to Wild on 7th, presented by Pilot Games. We're here until it's here. Welcome back to Wild on 7th, your favorite wild podcast. I'm Ryan King with John. <laughs> Keep that in. You're Ryan Carter. I'm John King. We're not restarting. That's great. Welcome back to Wild on 7th, <laughs> your favorite wild podcast. I'm Ryan Carter with my man, John King. Uh, hot start. If hot it start. makes you feel better, I forgot my dress shoes today. So I'm dressed kind of nice, but then I got the... I look like a guy walking through the Skyway. You're made. You're wearing his high heels. You're made for TV. Top yeah, up. This is you gonna, sit at the desk. Nobody knows. I you think can wear shorts. Can. Well, with that, this podcast is presented by Pilot Games. <laughs> While you're out enjoying your libations uh, at your establishments that that have charitable gambling, make sure you you grab a tablet, use Pilot Games, because when you do, your community wins. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, wild season is off. We've started home opener. Uh, Seattle came to town. The Wild hit the road. Winnipeg on a second of back-to-back. Uh, we're recording this Tuesday morning, uh, the day of the St. Louis game. So uh, there's there's more yet to be played. But you were at you were at the game, the home opener, right? Hockey holiday. Uh, you know, there's a few of these. The home opener. Thanksgiving, New Year's Eve, uh, the Winter Classic, USA Canada. Uh, my buddy wore a sport coat to the game, which I thought was a great move. I think home openers, I regret not wearing a sport coat. Little lapel pin, maybe Minnesota Wild. Like let's get like let's a get, fedora too, maybe. Yeah, let's. This is a big day. I'm a little older now. I can be kind of a guy sitting at a table at Herbie's in a sport coat. Um, but it's been a muddy start. Uh, they're playing really hard. Like if I was driving the wild home in my car, I would be telling them they're working hard and, you know, um, like I can just tell they're trying. Um, but there's been some bad puck luck, you know, goals with 1.5 seconds left, OT losses, which, you know, little, you know one point slipping away. Um, even the home opener with all the emotion from Johnny and and – Dean coming back, and they was really happy they gutted that one out. Um, but it's been a, it's been a muddy track to start. Um, if you contrast it with Superman punches and comebacks and signature moments, this is a a team with a chain that says hard after the game for the player of the game. And I think it's they're playing hard, and it's been a, a tough hard start to the season. But I think a good one. I I really like the. The body language and if they want to be tough to play against it seems like they're working that direction yeah for me the boy the the next week is of the utmost importance uh the the start to the season was critical and to the point that you're making where it looks like they're playing hard out there they are and if you can think about the first game of the playoffs like how fast it looks and like how nervous everybody is and the pace and how it doesn't look like the hockey that's played two weeks later in round two. You'd think it'd ramp up as you get to round two, round three, round four, but it's the opposite because guys settle in and, and you start to just play hockey. I think guys are running around a little bit. The pace is high. The feet are moving because it's all about skate, 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 get there, get there, get there, do this, do this, do this, do that. And so they're working hard, but sometimes you, like, you have to work smart too, and it just takes a little bit of time for that to show up in the game. I think when we're watching the games and off camera here, off off the mic, we talked about how there's been a handful of one-timers that have just missed. Yeah, I've, I've never seen more one-time, like obvious one-timer misses. Is that an early season thing? I um, think it's pace. So I think it's just the guy with the puck is moving a little faster than he ordinarily is because the checker's moving a little faster than they ordinarily are. And the skill hasn't caught up to the speed just yet. And this is like a – so like the first couple games, and Hines has touched on this too, there's a little bit of chaos to the game because it isn't at like the normal pace. It's, it's a little above just with the feet, um, and there's a little running around. And the thing with the NHL is – 
it's predictable. Like you know where your line mates are going to be. You know where the guys are going to be. You know where the other team's going to be. And early on, those guys are just a little bit away from where they should be because they're uh, a little eager to get to, to jump to check. Once these things settle down, you'll start to see these guys make plays, and then I think you start to see them connect on these one-timers too. Uh, but passes are forced a little sooner, uh, a little quicker, a little different. And they've been off. I, I think I touched on on the broadcast. There's a lot of these one-timers and like a lot of Kirill shots where it's looked different. He's off the back foot. So he's, he's skating away from the net, getting a pass, and trying to fling it towards the net. And it's getting underneath his toe. Same thing happened to Johansson once. Uh, I think I, I gave him a hard time about his tape job because Boldy could only see his tape, and he only has, like, the toe of his tape painted white. He threw it right there. <laughs> threw it right there, and it, it flubbed right off. Uh, but I, the, they're working hard. I, I think that they can just settle down a little bit and play and hopefully now game four will be that way. The start wasn't – it, it you wasn't – points just, in every game. I know, and you feel – you kind of feel like let down by that. I mean, yeah. if you were 2-1 and one right now, four points, I think you'd be happy. Yeah, because of the body language of winning. You know, I was looking at the standings today, and Chicago also has a win, right? And, and there's a handful of teams above us um, that are just collecting more straight Ws, you know, and so we're kind of – backdooring points um so it feels more rugged you, you even when you watch these games a, a a buddy of mine said i don't even really remember who scored right like like i i can't tell you you know that we had this goal and that goal and that play that happened it's just sort of you know and i like the insight that they're just a little frenetic right they're they're like a sophomore at prom you know it's the first couple games they're amped up maybe as they settle in we'll start to see the level come back right and the the first game I thought they played well they played well enough to win solid yeah the starts to the games for me haven't been terrific it, it's and it was this way in the preseason too they've been okay the first twenty minutes and then they get better and their third periods have been their best I think so far and it's been that way I think for the the start to the season too but. Y- you walk away from the Columbus game kind of feeling like, all right, they, they took care of business. It was closer than maybe what we thought we wanted to be, but a lot was unpredictable there. You've got the green carpet, and the players' routine is broken up on the things that they have to do for the media, and it is a show. It's a hockey holiday, and it's celebrated. It's the home opener. And you had the the Johnny Gaudreau. You, I think you felt that Columbus was going to bring a little extra. On paper, they don't look frightening, but there was going to be something – that that they were going to bring that you couldn't predict. And um, I, I think it was pace and a little bit more skill than we thought with Columbus. But you win. Then you go to Seattle, you go to the Seattle game, and I just think it just kind of wasn't clean enough. Seattle was gettable, but they worked hard. And the Wild shot themselves in the foot. That's just attention to detail. Like you, you go out, you get the lead. And Seattle never had the lead until they won that game. I mean, when Hartman raises his hands there, what – eight minutes left I was like this is finally we just shot him you know they we put him down what was the deal with that game I felt like our pets heads were falling off watching that and did Flurry play well or not well or I, I just that's the anomaly to me like if I look at game one and game three Gus has been solid yeah um Boldy stood out in the first game um, a lot of people stood out in the second game but it was kind of a weird game uh, Faber logging minutes, but what what was that Seattle game super weird to me? I I don't understand. This doesn't seem like a team that gets scored on that much. Um, did were we doing something really different in that game? I don't I don't know that we we're doing anything different. It's just, and this is sometimes where you need like leadership and a certain line to play a certain role and to step up and do things. But you score a goal. What what happened in that game? is they shot themselves in the foot. You get the lead, and then you let them score a minute or two later. I hate that You get so the lead, much. you let them score a minute or two later. That happened multiple times. That just takes the wind right out of your sail. Now you talk about, like, the winning mentality. All of a sudden, you, you, you just, like, don't have it. And it's not like it's gone forever, but you're kind of feeling like, all right, we're in one tonight. Like, this is going to be a grind. I'm not feeling confident we can just, you know, put our foot on Seattle and and move on. Uh, so Seattle stuck around. They're... Again, they're they're a young, eager team. Since they've come into the league, they've they've kind of been. Where Vegas on the ex, 
they broke into the league. They were the what were they called? Like the outcasts, or I, I don't remember what they're yeah, called. The, the misfits, or the something. misfits, the underdogs. They rolled that for like a year, and now they're like, we're not that anymore. No, now they're like, we'll cut you even if you won the cup for us, and yeah. we're gonna try to win another cup. Seattle kind of took that. Hey, we're misfits, and they still kind of are the misfits you know like they're they're they just haven't taken the next step yet but they work hard they're not going to give you free points um and and that was kind of the difference now with flurry i think i think he i I didn't look at the analytics but he he probably gave up a couple more than he should have but he stopped a couple that he shouldn't have Uh, i don't know if it was net even um perhaps he, he gave one total goal in the game away to them uh the the ones where like it hits it hits them and it's sitting down there. Uh, I think Everly goal, uh, the, the the first Everly goal, that one kind of stings you a little bit. Uh, the glove was beat up that game, both sides of the net. Um, so I, I don't know what was going on there. But we should talk about that Seattle goal for a second. If you didn't watch this game, Seattle ran this play on the power play where they put Everly on the back post. So imagine where Kaprizov sits on the power play. And he's going downhill to shoot. And the goaltender goes to front him. And the D's right there, too. Everly goes on the back post basically to stack his pads. So think of like a like a board over there just to redirect pucks in the back of the net. They did it the first time, and it hit off his shin pads and went like to the slot. And it was like, man, they're trying to do this on purpose. The next one, they do. They get it through. It hits a skate. And it goes into the net. So they're purposely trying to miss the net for a carom off of a skate. Or this gives me hope that I net. can play in the NHL. <laughs> yeah. If I can be literally a pylon, if I can just – I'm bigger than him. Yeah. I have more surface area. I'd love to just stand there and be a ricochet guy. Yeah. I hope this really develops. Yeah. yeah. So that, that was an interesting goal. But then you go to Winnipeg. Now, actually, we should talk about well, there's another big event that occurred in the Seattle game, and that's Erickson Eck. He finally got face washed so hard Erickson his nose Eck broke. Wanting to look a little more like me. Uh, by the way, Erickson Eck in a cage, uh, this is going to be something. This is going to be like Hannibal Lecter. I, I don't know. I mean, because everyone wants to punch Erickson Eck in the face for some reason, and now he's got this cage on. Maybe he's got two black eyes. I haven't seen him. Um, I'm fascinated by this. It reminds me of, if you want to go old school, Willie Mitchell had to wear the the cage uh, against Vancouver in the playoffs, and it was the funniest thing ever because he was just so pissed and he was trying to stir it up with everybody. He's running down the tunnel, but he's got the plastic attachment or the bubble. I don't remember what he was wearing, but I cannot imagine what Erickson Eck with a cage is going to be like. It's going to be a lot of people with waffle hands um, from sticking their fingers in that thing for the next uh, week or so. Yeah, I don't know how long he'll wear it. That that does stink. And he had the fishbowl on. Can you imagine what the inside of that would have looked like, though? I think the issue, the reason he couldn't play was because he couldn't get the bleeding to stop. So every time he would have, like, hit somebody or collided with somebody, it would have looked like a... A bloody in the mask? A, if, uh, yeah, like a frightening like, scene. Like an airbag went off inside of his uh, bubble? Exactly, and just blood on the, on the windshield. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, hockey, beautiful game. Well, what a tough customer, though. Takes that, puts a, goes in, puts a fish bowl on, comes out, wants to play, just can't play, can't, c- couldn't stop yeah. the bleeding. We, unless they can put wipers in that thing to get the blood off, he can't play. Yeah, he's such a – by the way, anyone that plays with Erickson Eck is going to do great. I was just – that's a player if you just move him. If you put him on the top line with Zuki and Carell, they're going to go on fire. You put him with Boldy and Johansson, they're going to go on fire. That guy is the catalyst. He is so important. Yeah. I remember when he got hurt last year and you kind of off camera were like, this is like five levels of bad man. <laughs> I mean, he, he does so many things. And uh, I, I knew we obviously appreciated him at the time, but – He's a killer, man. He is yeah. so good. And he's a he's a really good player, a uh, great player, but he's not the Wild's best player. I think that's easily Kirill Kaprizov. But we've talked about this before. He's their most valuable player. There's nobody that if you remove Hurts from, you more. from the lineup, your team is entirely different. If, if you take Brock Faber out of the lineup, your team's different, but it is not entirely different. You take Kirill Kaprizov out, there's still a huge impact, but your team doesn't look drastically different. 
Eric Sinek, you take him away, and it's like, wh- what do we have? Where do we go from here? Yeah, he's in a tier by himself. I, I think Faber and Kirill would also be pretty complicated, um, but Eck is just a... So they'd be big losses. Big, and, and they would really be a step back, but I, there's something about Eck, man. He's just like this. He's connected to so many parts of the game, special teams. Uh, he makes his line mates better. The the snot bubble in front, scoring those goals, puck retrieval. Well, guy's, a, guy's an animal. Let's go here. Who was the best line game one? Boldy's line with Eck. Yeah. And Boldy's line game two, how were they? Uh, well, Boldy Good. scored three points again. Good. Yeah. Started the season off multi-point games. Yeah. Two. Power play, how was it both games? Good. Good. Yeah. Good. Who's on those lines? Eric Sinek. Yeah. How about, uh, how about Winnipeg? Winnipeg. Uh, what did Boldy do? No. No, no, not no the same. No multi-point games. Not the same. I mean, you got Middleton uh, with the shirt off for the interview, another goal. I mean, so he was he was good in that game. Yeah, but my point – Maybe he was wearing X, some of X equipment. The, the, point, the point I'm going with here is you take X out, Boldy didn't look as good. Now, it's second to back-to-back. There could be a lot of reasons, but the fact of the matter is the power play didn't look as good. It was not as effective. We couldn't even get into the it, zone. It did not score. It did in the other games. It did not in the game that Eck didn't play. The second line was the best line on the ice game one. It was good game two. It was not game three without Erickson Eck. And let's go to the one, the win that came out of the sale in the Winnipeg game. That is the Shifley goal. Who would be taking that face off 100%? Erickson Eck. Erickson Eck. And the only thing that your responsibility in that situation, the only thing you cannot do is lose it to the middle with that pace. Boom. That's the only thing. You, Such actually, a backbreaker. Actually, Boldy, Boldy would be better off, and I have, I have to look again. Maybe he did swipe this way. You're better off swiping forehand. Launch it where they want to. Who cares if you lose the draw back that way? Launch it. Because the the guy's only, not There was able, only three seconds. On the, not, the guy's not going to be able to corral it, sit it down, and shoot it. The, the only reason that one went in is because it was one with perfect pace right on Shafley, Shifley's tape. It, they couldn't have done it better. They couldn't have. Um, so give him credit. But who would have been taking that draw lefty strong side? Eck. Mr. Erickson Eck. Right? So, yeah, it, it, you, you, you miss him. Your team changes drastically. The good news is Hines said that he is expected tonight. He didn't travel to Winnipeg. Quick turnaround. I mean, he breaks his nose at 10 o'clock at night. He couldn't stop bleeding. He can't fly at 11. <laughs> couldn't yeah, do it. That makes it hard. Yeah, couldn't do it. So he's in St. Louis, uh, hopefully ready to play. Um, but yeah, so to wrap up first three games, you're you're happy. If you would have said you have four of the six points, you'd be happy. Yeah. And while and- have four of the six points, it just doesn't feel like they're as happy as they should be. Yeah, I've loved the effort. Uh, they they are doing the hard thing. I think the Seattle game maybe is an anomaly, but the one and three games were, I mean, they were playing hard. Uh, and so, yeah, it, it's just the body language of it. Like you said, if you win two games outright and lose one, you just feel so much better than than pulling you know points out of the back door in a couple games. You ever see body language where somebody's like grabbing their their stomach kind of and hunched over? You think, like, are they in pain? Are they hungry? If, well, I, if you I, thought the body language was hunger, like, where would you direct them? Well, what I would tell them is uh, they should get some of Minnesota's best-selling caramel dip. That is supported by data. That's what it says in parentheses here. It's Minnesota-made. It's caramelicious. It's a delectable blend of rich caramel and creamy sweet goodness. It's a convenient snack pack. Look for the apples, find your friends from Jimmy's, get that caramel dip. It's that time of year. Don't you be messing with my dressing. All right. Um, I got to transition to you, but I don't know which one you're doing. We are here with Aquarius Home Services and Connecticut. Nice. But not only are we here till it's here, fall is also here right now. So football, cool, crisp air. This is the perfect time to bundle up and save with Aquarius. Right now, you can save 25% when you bundle a Kinetico non-electric water softener with the K5 drinking water system. Reverse osmosis. Tastes good. Get ready for spotless dishes, shiny fixtures, 
refreshing drinking water. And Aquarius is your independent authorized Connecticut dealer. They're here to take care of your water worries and make them go away. Schedule your free water analysis at AquariusHomeServices.com. Aquarius, earning the right to be recommended, Kinger. It's the pace of play. We're, it was. We're, that was your one-timer. <laughs> we're just a little amped up. We're a little amped up. Hey, you were saying this week, uh, so important. St. Louis, Columbus. Uh, this is our chance to get out of the murky middle and get that body language going. Get on that front foot before we go down into the sun in Florida. Like, let's get, let's get some joy. Let's get let's get a couple W's. Well, against yes. beatable teams, and I think it's it's less the standings. It's it's less. It's the feeling. This is all mental. That's right. So these guys have last year locked into their brains, good or bad, how it started, didn't start great, and terrible things happened. No Spurgeon injuries. Things, Coach gets fired. Things you yep. couldn't have happened happened last year, and this so far seems somewhat similar the game has not been great out of the gates the penalty kill has been poor the power play has been good jared spurgeon gets hurt. hurt if if they if they don't find a way to win these games and play good decisive hockey it could be like a oh no poor me type of situation ptsd and then you run into florida tampa philly pit so yeah let's get rolling i do believe i i think I like how they're playing. I mean, I mean that. Like, you know what I mean? If you were driving them home from the rink, if they were your kid watching these games, I mean, they are, they're ass over kettle given the effort. So we just got to break through, get out of this murky middle. They're given the effort. It's, they're still having to be pushed in certain spots, though. I, I think it was. What good. do you want to see be better? You can talk about the PK, but like, if you were the coach, what, what is what's on the top of your notepad to uh, elevate and start getting W's? And well, stuff? I think everybody just has to be a little bit better with with their job, with their role. I think they're playing like they're they're playing good structure and they're doing what they're supposed to be within structure, but they're not applying their role to the structure. So, for example, what does that mean? Give me a well, I don't know. So, for example, kind of Seattle, yep. Se- Seattle comes to town. You want to win this game. Hardworking club. First twenty minutes, nobody throws a hit. And yeah, that it's cr- you don't have to bury guys. You don't have to run around like a chicken with your head cut off. But you have you go out and you get trend and you have a, a potential grief line, and there's not a hit thrown. No fights yet. You've got you've got Middleton. You've got Faber. You've got big guys on the backside. There there wasn't. And I'm not saying that you have to hit to be good. I'm saying this team has to hit. There are guys on this roster that have to hit to play their role. So you're playing the system. You're where you're supposed to be. You're predictable. All that's good. But you also have to be good in your role. You have to win your battles. You have to win that front. You have to be hard to play against. You have to have a good stick. You have to you have to have So the physical guys aren't being as physical as you'd like to see. And then the the skill guys have to be better with their skill. So they have to be better when they approach the blue line with the puck. Sometimes you have to dump it in. Sometimes you have to get rid of it. You can't feed the rush the other way because you can't let you then they go change then the big boys come out and then they can't get on the forecheck cuz they're in D zone coverage. You know, they just have to be better in their roles a little bit, and I think it's coming. Um, but it to avoid some PTSD, it has to happen fast. Like, have you think about it? Have we seen? And I'm not, I'm not throwing shade. These guys want to get to a good start, and they don't want to make mistakes. And now, fragile PK, I think, is is in the back of their minds. Have you seen Middleton delete anybody? I've, I saw. I think he tried to fight somebody, and the guy Lowry. said no. Yeah, I thought, I thought he tried to fight Lowry, but but bury somebody. You know, I I, I don't know. How does that In work though? If you want to fight a guy and he says no, it's a dead end. Yeah, but then I would say you always have to ask. Or can you can you can you jump a guy? Yeah, What's the code? You could jump a guy. It happens all the time. There's there's little there's like little tricks and fighting. It's, I'm not talking about necessarily about fighting. I would like some fight. But there are tricks. So you can throw like one glove and grab him. You can shove him. You can grab the jersey right under his chin and jab him, jab him, jab him with with one glove off. And if he doesn't want to go, you get three mini jabs on his jaw. And then you say, all right, next shift. And then you keep going, you keep going, keep going. Well, I'm sure Mr. Suter will be uh, laying some wood on some people tonight. So he he might see a feisty one in St. Louis as yeah. well. But so just across the board, a little bit better in their identity. The and I think Spurgeon. This is the Spurgeon thing is 
scary in this way. There, it didn't seem to... Never even saw a play. That there was an event. It's it, like a black hole. It didn't seem like there was an event. Did Finish you see anything game. in the game? No. Didn't see anything in the game. We, we don't know if there was an event. And then it's announced that it's lower body. But what we do know is that he had hip and back surgery. So you come back, you're battling. It, 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 it's not going well. Who knows? Like, it, is it complications? You don't. You, you really don't know. Could be groin. Could be something else. Like that's the issue when you have hip and back pains. Is all of a sudden other things start to compensate, and you don't know until you hit game speed. Um, but uh, I, I don't. They called Damon Hunt up, so don't know if he'll if Jared Spurgeon will be available today. Um, he went home from Winnipeg, so that means he's likely not available. For St. Louis, they say he's day to day, which is a good sign. Not week to week, which is a good sign. But again, that's why I feel like these games are important. They have to have a good feeling. It has to go their way. Otherwise, it's a oh my gosh, here we go again. You know what I love about the chain saying hard though. I there's something about how this season has started, even from camp. That's like it's supposed to be hard. So they're almost staring at it. Uh, I know that PTSD in last year always creeps into your head, but I think the expectation is it's not. No one said it's going to be easy, so let's go. And I and I, you know, I'd like. I think this is a group that will respond in that way. Can we talk about Gus for a minute? Mm-hmm. I just think he's been excellent. I've never seen more pucks just dead off a shoulder. Um, he just looks great. I uh, and it. I, I think that's been very reassuring. I mean, both games he's played, I mean, he's a, one of the three stars for sure. Um, so that's that's very positive that the in a three goalie system potentially, it seems like he's emerging as your clear number one. Who are your three stars so far through three games? Uh, Gus, uh, Fabes is just. I, I feel like Fabes is like. Are you okay, Brock? I'm I'm fine. I'm fine. And then he just one day he's just gonna lay on the ice. <laughs> he's just gonna just be spent. So he's carrying the mail. And then uh third guy, uh well, it's weird, right? I mean, to go back to our original uh question, I guess it would have to be Eric Sinek, because he's the engine or Boldy, you know, those guys. Yeah, it's um, Boldy for me. Yeah, Boldy. Boldy's uh, number one for me. I think Gus is number two. Uh yeah, I, I'd go there. I think Faber's been Faber's been solid. He's eaten a lot of minutes. I don't think he's been like wow, but no. But I, I think he's kind of been duct tape, you know, as yeah. we've been going through this stretch. When you're playing what twenty eight minutes back to back, I just I just think that's that's been that's Not helped easy. us. Yeah, helped us weather the storm. Yeah, I, uh, but Gus is you're right. To all, to the like the pitchfork nation, I think as uh, it's been phrased from time to time, there were everybody was all ready to get rid of Gus. Well, he's he's playing pretty well. You got to give these guys. He's like twenty four years old, twenty five years old. You got to give him a little bit of time. The guy had a down year. He's barely had enough time in the NHL to be able to recover from a down year. And I heard he dropped some LBs. He was like, uh, if he had the fat cat syndrome from the big contract, I've heard he's dialed in this year. Well, I haven't and, seen the man. I don't, you know, I, man, I like weight fluctuation and, and man, myself. Management and coaching, they're smart. They, they understand these people in ways that we do not and how to motivate them, right? And, and maybe there, there's not. It's not a coincidence that there is a narrative that there's going to be three goaltenders. <laughs> Having Volstead like an elf on a shelf in your locker, that might make you go a little bit. Hey, you're still here? Yeah, just eating in the cafeteria. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you want to do the elliptical? No, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, it, and they they know how to get these guys motivated and how to get them going. And uh, when I, do we see the kid? I, think it would have, I don't know that we do. Like, how can you? Well, couldn't he play in flurry spot? Yeah, he could spot him. Yeah, but it'll only back and back. Just keep running, Gus. I'd run Gus these next two games. For but again, sure. it's amazing. Like you, you have the. It feels like the club has a plan going into the regular season, and then those plans are thrown right out the window as soon as, as it starts happening. As, as soon as Seattle <laughs> scores the goal, a minute after the Wild get the lead, and you know who would have been on the ice a minute after the goal? Who's that? Eric Snack. Yeah. Well, he was. Um, he was. <laughs> I'm kidding. It doesn't work as well. <laughs> hey, I got a text from Rat. By the way. Um, he said, I want to change my prediction. So this was on Saturday before 
So would they have played two games by then? I don't know. So he says, I have the Wild now squeaking in on a wild card spot. The speed at which they played in the last two games really impressed me. I think Gus is going to have a huge season. Hope they don't trade him. Looks like the top six are going to be elite. Colorado might be on the downswing. I mean, geez. did he listen? Did he listen? To the pod? He must have listened to the pod. Wow, flip flopper. He wouldn't get many votes in an election. He's he's pro fracking. He's anti fracking. He's pro Gus, anti Gus. Yeah, he already flipped, man. It took uh, took one game. I uh, hey, Gorgie said something on the radio the other day. I wanted your take on it. Um, he said, "Don't be surprised if you see Marat." on the top line with the other Russian and Zuki at some point. They're fast friends. He's got the great flow. He's a party on wheels. Is that an insane thought, or do we do triple Russians? I mean, Zuki speaks Russian. Yeah. I'm yeah. intrigued. Yeah. What do you think about Speaking that top of- line with Rossi and, and Murat? Or, like, what's the recipe when you have two guys doing the ESP thing? Like, how do you... How do you play with them? Well, X good with them. Yeah, well, I mean. What does X do? Uh, stands in front of the net and well, cleans up. Yeah, he plays a straight line game. And responsible game, too. Yeah, straight line game, but but he pushes the pace. So he sets the tone up the ice. And Rossi's not a straight line guy, though. No. So that he me. has the ability, but I think he also has the ability to f- like find space to curl up to you don't see Erickson Eck curl the up on in the, the neutral zone, the Patrick curl Kane. up, post up, <laughs> float it across a couple sticks and then land it in the weak side D. You could see Rossi doing that. And that's not a bad thing. Obviously that's a great thing. But there's certain styles that complement each other. And where Husnadinov I think would complement that top group, and I wouldn't be surprised, is what they're looking for is the pace car. So you let's say you're 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 running the marathon and you or whatever these races are. There's a runner that goes out there that sets the pace for the first couple of laps on these teams, and then the guys that are supposed to win take over after that. Husnadinov would be that pace runner, like get up the ice. He can wheel, he can skate, and he's gonna drag the other two guys up the ice so that they can't go east and west until they cross the blue line. I'm and, very intrigued by this. I just want Kirill at Moscow on the hill with the long haired youngster. Zuki Lincoln Town Car down to the rink. Like I, I'm into this. Never mind what happens on the ice. You no, like I, it. I'm into this. Like let's get old school Detroit Red Wings. Let's get a little Russian on the top line. So hey, Mur- between Rat and Murat, uh, I don't know. There's some positivity there. Are you trying to set me up for another ad read? Did it, did you give me the look? No, I was just uh, I was just talking about what I think the chemistry would be like on the ice for those guys. Um, do you want to know what chemistry would be like if you were shopping at the best grocery store in Minnesota? Yeah, like cookies and milk, or what is this chemistry? Well, Bush and Bush Light 24 packs are nineteen ninety nine at Cub Wine and Spirits. That could be helpful against St. Louis and Columbus. Delicious honey crisp apples. I know you're a fan. How much do you think honey crisp apples are per pound? Do you have any idea? You grocery shop. I would say a dollar fifty, dollar seventy seven, making Cub look bad. Come on, stock up now for cough and cold season and save five dollars instantly when you spend twenty five dollars. That is the three stars of the game, brought to you by Cub, our own legendary grocery store. You're not impressed at all that I was in like the, the yeah. You were in the wheelhouse. I I haven't. I would have said like seven dollars. Like I don't know anything. It's still a good price because Honey Crisps are the best. They're the best. They're the best. That was good. And uh, if you were going to construct a lineup that can get four points against St. Louis and Columbus, you had to get out your grease board, what would you do? Yeah, I would start with making sure they had a good night's sleep the night before. And in order to do that, I think you have to have a good roof over your head. Mm. And uh, if there are any doubts in your roof and its ability to make it through the winter, you should call our guys at Wild Construction. Uh, They have all the tools that you would ever need uh, to see if your home has been within the range of one of the storms that ripped through here this summer. Uh, There was one just a month ago, too, on my side of town. Uh, If there was hail damage, uh, they've got an estimator tool for you to go on there, check out. They'll have somebody come up and, and jump on your roof, give it a look before winter comes. And they might not be able to get to the roof, 
but you, you do have 12 months to get that thing repaired and they'll let you know they'll get you started and set up for the spring but make sure wild construction uh, they're uh, they're your go-to guys for roofs wildconstruction.com Excellent work. I have a couple random things to finish, uh, and then we'll talk about our guest, um, Lauko. Uh, but I uh, can I give you a few just random things? Sure. Hot lap doesn't work on the suite level. You got to be with the people. I mean, if you're playing hot lap in the suite level, you're looking for like Rivian car keys or um, quarter zips, or it's no good. A, a, a wife of a player taking them into that secret room. I mean, there's no, there's no joy. Hot lap only works down low with the people. That's one thing. Um, I, uh, I wanted to ask you this line on Winnipeg, this bully line with the Appleton honey crisp apple or whatever the hell his name is. And, uh, I don't even know any other names. They are terrifying. Who is this line? Is it Nino and Lowry? Oh, I, I can't sleep when I think of that line. And them on uh, a 97 all night, that is awful. Mm-hmm. And I think you guys said on the broadcast it was a little bit like the grief line. That rivalry is awesome. I, I, that's a game where, you know, more hitting, more fighting. Like Winnipeg is just a – that's a true rivalry. Mm-hmm. It's close to us. Their fans come down here and spill beer on our fans like – I wish we played them more, and I wish we played them later into the season this year. But yeah. I, I was very impressed with I, – I love a shutdown yeah. line, like just a prick line, a bully line. They're not, they're not just a shutdown line either, though. That line they can score, score too. like the grief line. Yeah. It's very similar. Yeah, like, I mean, Nino, that, Nino that's – Nino can score. Nino can get 20, 25 goals a year. That's the most impressive um, grouping I've seen in the three games where I was like, that's a handful. If you're a coach, you're like, get my guys away from that quicksand. And that Mason Appleton gets a lot of minutes, but I think in Winnipeg they kind of feel that maybe he doesn't deserve the amount of minutes that he, he deserves gets. them. But that line is so good together that you're like, what? What are we gonna do? Take him away? Like the line won't be as good. Great name. Throw him in there just for the Appleton. Right. A little honey crisp yeah. on there. Yeah, just dishing. No, so I thought that was kind of one random one, and uh, and I just got one text I had to share. <laughs> Middleton's mustache right now, um, my brother texted me and said, it looks like he had transplant surgery to put that on his face. I, I, I guess he's pre-gaming for November. Have you ever seen the thickness that he has right now? It's like it's a two-by-four under his nose. It's the best mustache. Philip Forsberg with the twist. I mean, you put that in a cage match, MMA style, Midzi's mustache against Forsberg. I mean, you'd be he'd be tapping out. Let's go let's Sna- go snap all it or time mar- uh mustaches of the NHL. Okay. Number 1, the guy from Calgary. Lanny McDonald. Number 1. First of all, he won the cup with that mustache. I think the mustache lifted the cup. Um, number two, Middleton right now. I'm serious. It's unreal. Besides the cup, it's got everything you need. It's not quite gross. Uh, what's the guy from Calgary? What's his name? McDonald. So what he did was, you know what, when a guy has a gross beard and it starts to have all these curly cues, loose curly cues, his stash was like that way over the lip. You know, um, I think Midzi keeps a little. Yeah. When it starts to curve and curl. Yeah, I, I don't know. Oh, and then the other guy that had a great one. This is the third one. Is George Perros? That's what I was. That's where I, I was mean, going. And George where did he Peros. play? He's from like Princeton or something. Well, he went to school there. I mean, now he's now he's head of uh, player safety, the Department of Player Safety. Great stash. That's top three all time, right? Yeah, there it is. Maybe Peros is ahead of Midzi, but um, yeah, there. I mean, those are some legendary ones. I, I think that Midzi's mustache is better than Peros. So if we yeah. if we had a if you're side, just straight stash, we had a side by side of their mustaches. Yes, Middleton's is better than Peros's. If you didn't know anything about no. hockey, 
No, but Middleton's going to have to do some work to usurp George Peros and what that mustache meant during his era. Yeah. You know, because George is a tough customer. And Absolutely. When you saw that stash, you were shaking in your boots. So. You also got the Crosby stash. Um, remember, like, his third year? When he tried to grind it out with the boys, and it only grows on like the top half. So we should go worst three stashes. <laughs> I think Jack Eichel. Yeah, he's, Crosby's he's in got the like top blonde three. hair, and it's it's thin. You know, uh, the only Chris thing Crosby Sid could. You know how Sid gets better at one thing every off season. I, he's like so good, he could just come back with a Middleton mustache if he focused on it. I don't think he's focusing we, on it. We need more topics like this for the podcast. They need to win a couple of games, and we need funny stuff to happen. I feel we like we're bo- winning right we now. We need Boogergate. We need. That's what we need this week. Yeah, let's get a couple moments. Let's get a little weird. Um, well, I'm going to be in Florida with you. So if I have to jump on the ice with my shirt off, if that's where we're at, you know, anything's possible. I don't think they want any urine dribbling on the ice. We, You know what? There's a chance that gets cut out, at least by Bally. So we'll see. But uh, should we talk about Lauco before we get into the interview? Or did you have anything else on your list that any other nonsense that you wanted to hit? No nonsense. No nonsense. I, I, I think the game's okay. Uh, it, it's okay. There's room for improvement. I, I hope it comes sooner rather than later. And I, I, we will see the mental fortitude of this club in the next two games. I agree. Um, so our guest, I started to like this guy. I told you this in the Dallas game. I think we were losing 4-1 to one preseason, and he was just giving it to the Stars by the bushel, by the wheelbarrow. High word count on this young buck. Um, I think every story he told us about his life – basically concluded with him saying he, f it he he, he <laughs> debates with himself and everything ends with f, f it. it i'm doing it hold my beer <laughs> i mean uh so he's fearless um he's a grape specialist uh and generally he wants no cotton candy grapes in his game or in his life um i'm and and he told tells quite a story about a, a near um life-changing injury. So if you're wondering why he's wearing the neck guard, um, uh, you'll find out in this interview. Um, this is a guy that probably isn't too fond of uh, sharp skates, but um, he's an animal. Uh, we're in the 90 number, so you'll see him on the ice. He's the kind of guy I think uh, I'd like to see him trading even more paint. Right. No, I agree. Yeah, let's get to it. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, Jacob Lauco. Here we go. All right, this interview is sponsored by Duke Cannon. If your hair is a weapon or you wish it was, you can't do better than Duke Cannon. Minnesota company, you can find it over at Target. Check it out. Work harder, smell better, Duke Cannon. We're here with Jakob Lauko. The J sounds like a Y for all of you Minnesotans trying to embrace the new Czech badass that's joined the the Wild. Welcome to Wild on 7th. Uh, we brought some grapes for you, which we'll Thank get into, you. which is a pretty specific uh, niche that you've built around yourself. But uh, how are you enjoying your time in Minnesota so far? Yeah, thank you. Thank you guys for bringing me here. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been a great, like, uh, it's been almost a month here. Uh, so, you know, I'm enjoying my time. I'm having fun, and it's, uh, it's really been great so far. I really, you know, like the... The environment around, you know, guys in the locker room, coaching staff, you know, uh, training staff around, trainers. Like, I'm really having fun, and uh, it's uh, it's really, really, really been great, and I'm grateful to be here. How was the the trade? Did it surprise you at all, or? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I said it a few times now. Like, I mean, like I had no idea I was happening. I was literally just uh, having fun at a dinner with my friends on Saturday, and. The the call came in, so uh, I was told I was traded. So uh, I just happened out of nowhere, and you know, I just happened to be Minnesota Wild. So uh, who called you first? Is it uh, uh, Boston GM? Yeah, Boston GM yeah, calls Boston. you, and then Billy calls you after. Yeah, I, uh, my agent called me right after, and Billy Billy called me after after a few minutes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. What does Billy say? I mean, you're you're sitting in the North End eating some Italian food in Boston. You got I was your... I was back home. I was back okay, home. I you're was in back the... home in Czech. So uh, I had a couple of beers in me. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> uh, I, they, Pilsners. I, yeah, a couple of Pilsners. Though. But I gotta be honest. If it would be in seven round, I might have more. But 
it was uh, it was fourth round, so I had like three or four, I think. So it was good. But <laughs> it was early. It was early. It was early <laughs> night. But uh, yeah, I was just Billy. Billy called me and he was like, "How you feeling?" I'm like, <laughs> drunk. Yeah, I mean, like I don't know. And he was like, "Yeah, first one's always hardest." I'm like, "Yeah, hopefully there's not going to be more of those." But uh, yeah, he was just uh, the basically first first thing he said. It's like uh, at least I don't have to fight fight against. Uh, against us so you know because i had two fights against uh, yeah in like four uh, against, days right yeah, yeah four days so it was the first thing that he said that i had to fight uh, fight us so yeah i mean like he was just just telling me like just welcoming me like telling me some first first informations like his first thoughts and we were just talking talking more after so it was just like really just welcome welcoming me in uh, in the organization what did you fight who were who your two fights against uh do and do the double Dewey, yeah. <laughs> who yeah. was who was a better fighter of the of the Deweys? Uh, uh the, to him was uh, stronger for sure. That's, that sounds about right, doesn't sounds it? Like, no offense to the other. Nah, Which no. one was first? Uh, the Connor, uh, Connor was Dewar, and then uh, Duham got a little upset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like, no, I, was, uh, I got it. I got to get my brothers back. Was, Did you win both fights? Uh, I I, I won Dewar, and I think Duham would win on on points the second one, but. It was it was funny because like I jump on the ice and you know the Duham was uh, left wing, I was left wing, so we like head across di- didn't match up and uh, I think we scored on power play and I jump on the ice and I saw him coming at me and I was just looking at him and like I was like you want to fight eh? <laughs> and he was like yeah I'm like okay let's go. That's so, great. So, why did he want to fight? Because I fought Dewar. Like, fought Dewar, like uh, so that was why? Yeah, yeah no, he was coming right at <laughs> Jesus. me. Jesus. He was coming right at me. I'm like, yeah, like I guess you want to fight. Hey? So. It's the Dewey code. I, uh, yeah. It's funny. When guys get traded from the podcast standpoint, I think, Karts, you probably do this too. We always check out, like when Middleton got traded, someone from San Jose is like, you're going to love this guy. He's a beauty. I, I reached out to some Boston folks, um, and they were like, you're gonna like this guy, man. He's a prick on the ice. Uh, he he is tough to play against, and they were a little bummed out that you left. So I'm excited to see a little sandpaper back in the locker room. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, like you know, I like to I like to you know running around a little bit, you know, hit people, you know, just talk to talk to guys, and you know, like I'm not afraid to fight. Like if someone, so, I mean, like I'm not gonna fight like Revo, for example, right? Because <laughs> That would be that would be just stupid, but <laughs> I mean, uh, I I mean, like, I'm not I'm not afraid to drop gloves, so I'll, I'll I'll fight. So I was watching you at the end of the Dallas preseason game, and they were filming the bench, and man, you were just giving it to the stars. I wish I could hear what you were saying, but so you're pretty yeah, involved. You'll be a good mic'd up candidate. Yeah, I don't think he will be able to be mic'd up based on what it was looking like. But so you you got a pretty high word con out there, right? You're you're letting them know how you feel too. Yeah, I mean, you know, like I, you gotta you gotta be like respectful too. You know, you know, they just you just can't run run around and like, you know, talking, t- talking shit. Now, yeah, shit to to Sidney Crosby, for example, right? But you know, like you you got guys who plays third fourth line. You know, who likes to who likes to be talking, uh, who likes to be uh, involved in stuff. So those are the guys that I would like to talk to and. You know, like I'm, I'm trying to be like in every scrum possible, and so that's that's part of my game. I always liked it. So. Well, yeah, what's a go-to move? Uh, you know, you kind of used to be like the stinky mitt, right, in the face. Is it is it like a face wash now? You have no, a go-to I mean, move. I mean, like, like a slash I, on the laces. No, I, I don't slash. I'll, I'll usually I usually just grab someone, just like start like. You know, just like little little pump fake, pump fake, but <laughs> like down low, like down no, here in the no, elbow. No, 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 just uh, like just in the neck. Oh, yeah, up high. Neck. I like it. Yeah, I like that's that one, agitating. I like that one, but yeah. you know, so like I, I played against Jordan Tutu, and Tutu would like grab like what he thinks is like your throwing arm a little bit, and then he he'll like he'll like grab you and push you and tug you, and oh, yeah. and then you're kind of like super uncomfortable, like. I, I, no, I don't feel good because, like, if we actually do end up fighting, like, I, I, he, he's got me tied up already. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, so he's getting just, ready for it yeah, right so away. Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any go-to chirps? Well, so again, 
Well, my trips, it, it would be like I'd want to be serious a little bit, but then I also knew I could win if I could get you to laugh a little bit. So there needs to be like a little creativity to mm -hmm. your trips. Uh, you subscribe to that theory, or you go right no. for the jugular? No, I mean, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, I mean, like it depends on like who that is, you know. Like yeah, yeah. If yeah. if if someone someone's like uh, accidentally ends up on PP. Uh, yeah. Who is not supposed to be on PP? I mean, like I let him know, but it, it would be same for me if I ended up on PP. I, I would assume that someone would call me out, but yeah, uh, they put me in that front. Yeah, yeah, front. yeah, yeah. I mean, like when you put when you put a four fly winger on 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 par play, I mean, like, like what the hell are you doing there, right? So I would I, I would call him out, like like I would expect they would call me out. So. Uh, yeah, I, I just like it depends on situation, like yeah. depends on the game, depends who you play in. But uh, yeah, I mean, like I like to talk, I like to be local. So yeah. So where'd you grow up? Uh, I, like I'm from Czech Republic. Yeah. Uh, I uh, I grew up. I was uh, accidentally uh, like everyone in Czech called me that I'm Prague born and raised, but it was an accident. I just got born there because my mom was basically visiting, and it happened. But, oh, funny. Uh, yeah, but uh, I was uh, I I grew up in in like a small place, like it was like a countryside village close to my hometown. Basically, it was like 20 minutes from from the town where I went to school. Where I play hockey. It's called Kalmutov, and the small village is called uh, Yindrichovas. It's like a George George village, basically, and it's it's a small it's a small place, like 200 people, right on the borders with Germany. So my, my parents had a house there. Uh, it's it's like up in the mountains. So we were just my dad worked in the, in that in that city in Khomutov. My mom worked there. So it was like 20, 20 minutes, 20 minutes drive. So I, I grew up there and uh, like I don't regret it it's a single bit. It was the best best childhood I could have. Yeah. So Czechs are like they you guys are hard to play against, but not a lot of them fight, right? Like it. it it, it's not common to have. Yeah, I mean, like you, you, you have you have a few guys, right? You have Gudas, who's tough. Like, I mean, he's tough as nails. Uh, you know, you got you got a couple guys in AHL that that fights, but you know, we're you know, you got guys like Pasta. You yeah. Know, you got guys like uh, you don't. I know Voracek, who was skilled player. Uh, Zaka now in in Boston doesn't fight. Responsible, good player. Eliash, Jager, those guys didn't fight. Yeah, so. Plakanic or yeah, Plakanic. It's like those guys didn't fight. So, did you play on that World Championship team? No, no, I didn't. What I didn't. a party they had, oh. huh? Yeah. God, I was just <laughs> I was living vicariously through the social media. Yeah. I'm like, wouldn't want to be traded in the middle of that party. Yeah. Oh I, my. Yeah. No I saw, way. I I I saw some like behind the scenes, and I mean, like I, they got after it. That I mean, like. I would get after it out as well. I mean, like if you went, you know, for for Canadian Canadians and U.S. U.S. guys, I mean, it's not a big deal because yeah. uh, you still have a U uh, NHL playoffs. But you know, for for the European nations, like especially the smaller ones, like you know, like us, Slovakia, you know, uh, Latvia. Two years ago, they went to finals, I think, or they won bronze. I don't know what, but it's it's a big deal. It's a big deal, and uh, you know, like a. Basically, the whole when the when the final happened, like a whole Czech Republic stopped for a day, and yeah. all all that was on the mind was just hockey, you know. So and partying and partying, yeah. yeah so I, I was gonna say, did you did your town have a team? Because it's, I think hockey's different in Czech, right? Where like the town will have a team, and you kind of grow up yes, through that yes, team, yes. Kinda, almost like soccer, right? Yeah, yeah. So basically, it works like that. Like you have a you have a my team was called uh, until I was like. 12 it was KL, klh uh like a club of uh ice hockey basically is the is the translation Khamutov. then it switched it's like rebrand and it happened to be uh pirates uh pirates of Khamutov. so it works like you you start like uh you can go on the ice when you're like two or three you can start skating with like young guys and then you guy and then you go and you have like u7 u8 U9, U10, U11, U12, U13, U15, U18, whatever. And you basically can stay with one club your whole life. That's how it works. You don't have to. And then that club will have a pro team too? Yeah. If, if like, you know, like if it happened, if you happen to be in like a better team, it it's usually have a pro team, yeah. 
Yeah, and that's is that what Yager owns now? Because yeah, like yeah, I see yeah. a bunch of stuff. Yeah. He owns like one of those teams. Yeah, yeah, he owns one of those teams. Yeah. Yeah, they he's playing. They play in the, like uh, the top division. Yeah. Yeah, and he's still playing. He's still playing. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Is, is he just the lord of Czech hockey? I mean, have you? I mean, is that a guy you've seen around growing up playing hockey? Or? Yeah, obviously. I mean, like last last few years, he was just like, uh, uh, you know, like people people are like just saying that like he should retire. Cause you know, like it's it's still amazing that he's playing. You know, like when you grow up, like Jager was like the the guy, the guy, right? So like your idol. Yeah, yeah. I, like everybody I, in Czech wanted to be Jager. Yeah, yeah. Like like everyone now wants to be Pasternak, right? Yeah. So uh, he was he was just a guy, and like now like it's it's crazy that he's still playing. But I mean, like I I think he should like, you know, it's amazing. Like I have all the respect. Like I all the respect in the world, but I think he should, like, he should yeah. have retired a few yeah. years ago, he, you know. He, I played with him, like, 10 years ago in Jersey, and he was saying how he's going to play forever. Yeah. And uh, not throwing show to, uh, shade his way, I, I think he owns the team, and I he think does, he thinks yeah. it helps sell tickets if he's playing, so yeah. I think that's no, part of the he, reason why he's still he's, playing. he's basically playing because, uh, you know, like, it's easier to get sponsors when yeah. he's still playing. when he's there. Yeah, when he's there. Yeah, yeah totally. What, what's Pasta like? He looks like, it. I mean, I saw him dress as Barbie for the winter yeah. class. He just seems like a party on wheels. Is he a good time? What's he like? You played with him, obviously. He's, uh, pa- uh, Pasta is good. Like, he's fun. Like, you know, you can you can tell that, like, he, he grew up a lot, like, last few years. You know, he, he uh, obviously, he got he got married this summer. He uh he is a he is a beautiful beautiful girl so he's a he's a dad he's a he's a husband now so he grew up he grew up like you can tell that he he becomes like uh, he became like one of those like a pro yeah he became one of the leaders for Boston which is like obviously not not a not a easy not a easy uh, thing to do thing to do you know to be to be one of the leaders in in Boston so uh yeah he's great he's great like. Uh, Great hockey player, great, great, uh, great guy in the locker room. So. Great dresser. Like, how's uh, your, yeah, how's your style game compared to his? I mean, like, you're gonna have like these three piece suits and fedoras. Uh, and stuff? I mean, like, when you make an eleven point five, I mean, like, <laughs> you, can, <laughs> you can afford to wear whatever you, you want. Get, right? yeah. <laughs> so. We got a rack of clothes over here, wild yeah. stuff that we wear on we the podcast. Uh, we got the secondhand <laughs> store over here. If you want, <laughs> should we warm them up with? We want to do rapid fire. Yeah, let's right? hit them with rapid fire. So this is called yeah. rapid fire. Okay. You seem pretty comfortable uh, with the speaking so this should be easy for you you just go fast okay and you're gonna go from both sides okay. if you don't know the answer just say pass um, wow. so nickname Laux. who do you text the most uh my best friend what kind, what do you listen to in the car basically anything most i would say avici nice uh did, have you had like a, a job outside of hockey like a first real job uh no <laughs> no one has, by the way. I know. If you could have a green light, you just the coach just says, "Blow off some steam, boys!" In any NHL city, which one are you picking? Uh, now, probably Boston. Uh, how about pet peeve? You have any pet peeves? You know what that is? I have no idea. Like what things that, that kind of annoy you, make oh, you angry. Oh, it annoys me. Yeah. Uh, rib riding. Uh. Some let's let's just say that something was written and now they make a movie about it and they rewrite it. Oh, nice! Yeah, uh, making change about it. That's that's what annoys me the most. Sequels. Uh, no, 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 not even a sequels. But like if something was like written in a book and someone decided, uh, like Netflix or Amazon, and they just make a movie about it and they completely like change oh they it change and it and they change it. Yeah, that's yeah. what annoys me the most. This is gonna be tied to Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones and Star Wars. We're gonna have to get into some of that. But what's your pregame meal? Uh, chicken parm. Nice. Favorite social follow? Like, uh, you're active on the social media. Who do you like to follow on social media? <laughs> I don't know if, it, if, it's a, if it's a good role model, but uh, I like Conor McGregor. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Do you see Roadhouse, the new one? Yeah. Outstanding work by the Irishman. <laughs> just Is it? Play, just playing himself. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it was so good. I mean, I, I could watch it a thousand times. What's your go-to drink at the bar? What would beer. you be? Beer. Check beer. What's the best check beer? Pilsner Ruquel. Okay, we gotta we gotta get some of that. That's yeah. that's the I mean like. You have it here now. You got it stocked in your place. I do. Yeah. <laughs> There's a liquor store like two minutes from my house, and they have it, so I have some at home. Welcome. <laughs> first car. Oh, first car. Uh, 
Uh, Volkswagen Polo. Perfect weekend. What would you be doing? Like you get away, what would you want to do? Uh, probably get away, uh, get away from the city. Uh, to some, to some house uh, outside, uh, barbecue with my friends. Uh, just nice weekend golf, maybe. Just just a nice weekend barbecue, little uh, beer outside, uh, golf in the morning. It would be great. It's weird like, food combo. Ooh, weird food combo. Uh, like, like grapes and salt or uh, grapes and eggs salt. and ketchup. Uh, Gra- grapes and shampoo. Damn, it's a tough one. You uh, can pass. I'll pause this one. I would need to think about that. Uh, last thing you binged watched, so like a TV show or a movie that you just crushed on Netflix? Uh, uh, the, the Fallout series. Okay. It's Fallout. on It's on Amazon. Uh, I just uh, I got here and I didn't have anything to watch and I didn't see it, so I just crushed it in like two days. <laughs> Sounds like you're a Netflix guy. Do you have your own accounts, or are you still on like your parents, or you have? No, no uh, so I have my own accounts, but uh, I I live in uh, I live in Vanilla Tierra's spot because we get traded for each other. Okay. Right? So I live in his house. So he basically left all his uh, all stuff, his stuff logged in. Yeah, logged oh. in. Oh, so. now his profile's getting yeah, a, yeah, a, yeah, a so couple it, of different yeah. clicks. <laughs> I like that. Hey, who plays you in the movie? You got to do a bio epic about your life. Who's the actor that you pick? Conor McGregor. Conor, that, that would be tough. Uh, okay, if we'd be younger, uh, if uh, let's let's just say young uh, Harrison Ford, because I love Harrison Ford. Nice. Yeah, he's. I think he also has like a record for like he's all of his movies have been profitable. The guy's never not had a profitable. Yeah, he's movie. amazing. I love him. He makes money. What's your favorite holiday? Uh, f- probably Christmas. Something you absolutely need in the fridge. Uh, absolutely need in a fridge. Uh, I would say beer lately. Uh, I mean, like I just, I just can have a one cold beer a night, and I'm, I'm. Then you're I'm good. Happy, yeah. yeah. You pour it in a glass. No. Okay, right out of the. Okay. Right bottle or can? Bottle. Bottle. Bottle, yeah. And then, where do you buy your clothes if you had to get like a Zara? Gift? Zara. Zara. Yeah. The Spain, the Spaniards. Well, that was he's. See, this guy's yeah. like ready to go. Yeah. First concert. First concert, ooh. Uh, or favorite I, concert? Okay, fa- uh, first concert. I think it was uh, it was a Czech guy. You guys probably not gonna know him. Uh, definitely not gonna know him. My mom made me come there. My me maybe go there. His <laughs> name is Michal David. I'm not proud of it that I went now. That's <laughs> uh, like I, me. My first was Dixie Chicks. Yeah, yeah. but my favorite was uh, definitely Imagine Dragons. Nice. Yeah, that's good. Should we? I, let's I, get to the grapes. Yeah, what's going on with the grapes? Let's do a taste test. Yeah, so like you, so for people watching or listening, listening, this is a guy who somehow has, I don't know what a sommelier of grapes would be. Maybe a sommelier. But uh, what? What? How did this happen? Grapes. Why is this a thing? Why are you? Why do you know so much about grapes? <laughs> okay, so I mean, <laughs> I think I eat more fruit than. Anyone else I know, I always used to, and all kinds. And, you know, just like before the game, during the game, I like to eat fruit. And in Providence, when we playing, like when I came to U.S., like when I was playing in Czech, when I was playing pro Czech, when I, even when I was playing in juniors in Q, it's always like fruit, food, uh, fruit during the game that you just go and take some, you know, just, in a, just a snack between the periods. And when we were in Providence, we didn't have anything. So I just start bringing like my own fruit, and you know I was trying like anything like whatever like I was doing like nectarines, peaches, uh, watermelon, uh, oranges, and to grapes one day and walked out and I mean like they're pretty like easy to eat right? You just you just wash them and just take one one after each other. So I just started doing grapes and you know I. Just happened to like them maybe way too much, so I eat them like almost every day. And you know by sight what all these grapes are, <laughs> like you know what. So like, what do we got here? Well, he knew the cotton yeah, candy. Yeah, I, I knew so cotton, cotton candy. Cotton candy's yeah, where right away. Oh, like you're on the right side. And like, how do you, how do you know that that's cotton candy? Because shape uh, and color, he said. It's a shape, color, and it's softer. Oh, the bounce back on the bite is what the difference is. Yeah, this is soft. This, are you? You know, th- these one, these ones are definitely super like uh, crunchy. The yeah. ones on the left, I I like the blue ones. Blue ones are great. The red ones, I think, I'll uh, are on the bottom. 
All right, on the bottom. Yeah, cotton, yeah, cotton, cotton candy. I, I mean, like, I wouldn't buy them. They're too sweet. Yeah, it's They're a gimmick. Sweet, and yeah. is this stocked in the wild locker room now, or are you you bringing little baggies in? I'm, I'm bringing them back. Every <laughs> It's nice. I could see that though, because they are easy. That's like why bananas are such a great snack yeah, too. Yeah, you I peel mean, it, it's done. And versus like an orange, where you you'd have like orange all over your hands, yeah, and you got to stick it in your sticky, gloves. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You do know that you could probably have them get grapes for you. I think they could do it for you. I think they could. Yeah. Yeah. But I like to bring those routine. <laughs> routine. Yeah. Yeah. It's routine. Yeah. It becomes routine. That's what you got to do. Uh, let's get to. Like Lord of the Rings and the fantasy and the stuff that you like watching, man. Yeah. And you have a giant tattoo of Game of Thrones. Yeah, I, I do it on uh, uh, under. It's a really thing. nice one. I mean, it, yeah. It, I mean, uh, I what's have, her I name? Have, that character. Uh, so I have the Game of Thrones. I have uh, I have the dragons, uh, the Targaryen logo, and I have Daenerys. And okay, I'm, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest with that one. <laughs> I have a I have a tattoo artist back home, and he did all my tattoos. Yep. And I just. <laughs> <coughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, great. Uh, uh, if you're choking uh, hazards, yeah. it would be amazing. All right, we got to find a new fruit. <laughs> uh, I trust him with everything, so I tell him, hey, uh, when I had my first one, I was like, hey, I, I want to do like something Lord of the Rings, uh, um, like on my forearm. Like, do do can can you come uh, can you come out with something? So he did. I did I did like inside inside of my biceps, other side, everything. He did everything great, and I told him, hey, like uh, I want to do like a shoulder. Do you think you can do Game of Thrones? And he was like, "Yeah, sure. Like, what do you like? Uh, what do you like of Game of Thrones?" I'm like, "You know, like I like Starks. I like Targaryens. Uh, you know, like basically whatever. Like, come, come with something." And he was like, "Yeah, okay. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great." So he said, "Like, hey, come, uh, come, like in two days. Like, I'm gonna be something set up." So I, so I got there, and he said, "Like, okay, okay, we're gonna do this, do this, do this." And so he came out that he's gonna do like a big like Daenerys Targaryen like face and like I was looking at it and oh no and I was like on the fence I'm like damn like do I ever live on like some other girl's like face, face on, on my it. body for the rest of my life but and I was there and I'm like you know what fuck it like just do it <laughs> just do it. <laughs> So he do it, but I gotta say he did a pretty good job. He didn't. Yeah, he great. didn't. He didn't that's like. Good. That's not easy to do. So you were hoping for like John Stark, or I, like maybe yeah, I was. Like, I was hoping that he's gonna do like some, you know, like maybe Jon Snow with with like a sword, or you know, maybe maybe like something like that, or seen seen from like a battle, or I don't know, something like that. And he came out with, with like a face of Daenerys Targaryen. Like I'm not gonna lie, I like I love her. <laughs> I, 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 told, I told like every girl that I was ever talking to like hey if there's ever a situation that yeah I can it that I can have something with Amelia Clark like I'm sorry I'm gonna do it yeah if you have a crush if you want to do something if, if Leonardo DiCaprio comes at you and he, he wants to like sleep with you I'll let you <laughs> if you let me if you let me with sleep with yeah. Amelia Clark so <laughs> So it was always. I saw you put her on blast when you posted it. Did you? Did she hit you up on? No, uh, uh, I'm um, heartbroken. But you know, it, it, all you uh, can do yeah, is yeah, put the signal yeah, out yeah. there. Yeah, I try to. I try to. But that's also a good play, though. Like to any of your your girlfriends, uh, your wife, or whatever. Just be like, hey, you, you, no, you're number two. It's okay. It's a good spot to be. Yeah. Denarius is number one. Yeah, I'm gonna say, hey, if ever if ever that situation no. happens, I'm I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I just want I, I just want you to to be to be okay with it. Like if that's ever going to happen, it's going to happen. Okay. It's, it's good to get that out right away. So in the world of science fiction, your rankings like uh, Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones. It seems like there's some Star Wars on your Instagram. Yeah. Where are you at, Marvel? I don't know what. What's your power ranking of uh, these series? So uh, like my number one is Lord of the Rings. Everything that Tolkien wrote. I mean, I I read like all his books. Yeah, so you read them too. Yeah, I read I read all the books. That's that's. I mean, like I'm I'm glad I read it. Uh, now now I'm just pissed. Like what they doing with the Amazon? What is doing with that series? Like I'm, you know, it is what it is. Like I I'll, I'll I I watch it because it's from from Tolkien and it's from that universe. But I'm just always so mad when I watch it. But just from a principle, uh, just just I'll I'll just watch it. And you met Vigo. 
I, I saw, met Vigo, yeah, yeah. How did that happen? I saw a picture with you. And so him. that was that film festival that, uh, that it was the weekend where I got traded. Okay. I was. Uh, it's a big, big f- uh, film festival back home. It's in Carlo Vivari. It's like pretty well known around Europe. And he was like a guest that's, that's, that was there. And so I texted my agent because I knew that my agent knows the, the director of the festival. So I texted him, hey, like, do you know, like, you can text the director if it's possible that, like, I can meet him because, like, he was, he was, like, basically my childhood hero when I grew up. So, so he texted him and he set it up. So the trade happened on Saturday. Uh, not going to lie, after the, after the trade happened, I got absolutely blasted, like, <laughs> destroyed, destroyed. And uh, the plan was that uh, I'm going uh, to meet him uh, on Sunday on afternoon. And the guy, the guy who was, like, setting it up with me, he said that he's going to call me in the morning on Sunday. So I woke up on Sunday around, like, 11, 10, and, and I had four missed calls from that guy. <laughs> and I start freaking out. Like, I was literally, I was like, the second second biggest like uh, freak out that I ever had, so I call him right back and I'm like, hey, I'm very sorry, I, like I missed the call, so, like I had it on silent, like I didn't see, it. I was practicing whatever, I just lied, lied about everything, and he's like, no, no, it's okay, hey, just just got here at like, uh, be be at this place uh, at like 4:30 or five, so Perfect. I was so I was there at like 2:30, I was waiting for like two hours in the lobby just for him to get there. And, uh, you know, when I, when he got there, I was literally like, I forget I speak in English. Like I didn't know how to speak English in the moment. Like I was shaking, like I was sweating, like, and he, the first thing he said was to me, Oh, I heard, I heard you playing for, Bo-. cause his wife, his wife, uh, I think he's, he's from Montreal and him and his family is in Montreal. So they're Canadians fans. So he said, like, I heard you playing for Boston, so I shouldn't be speaking to you. And I'm like, uh, uh, you know, I, I got traded yesterday, so I'm not, <laughs> yesterday. I'm not, 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 not anymore. I'm like, oh, really? So that's good. That's good. So, so I was talking to him for like, I don't know, five, ten minutes. Like we were chatting. I saw him that like I have a tattoo of him on his own forearm. And, uh, you know, it was just like one of those moments that I'll never forget for yeah, the rest of my really life. Was he cool? A lot of times. Yeah, he was, he, he, was he, good, he, he was great. He was great. But it was, uh, yeah, it was like, it was literally like, my childhood hero and it was just like unbelievable experience like unbelievable moment i'll never cool. forget yeah how well do you know the guys in the locker room now you've been here a month you said yeah should we do some character assignments like who in the locker room would be gandalf oh gandalf uh okay i would say midzi because he he's speaking like under the beard so <laughs> like I, th- I think he could be a good gandalf all right how about the hobbits frodo <laughs> Okay, I'll take some small guys. Uh, I think Kuzi, uh, Marco. Uh, <laughs> Do they have Hobbit feet? Okay, though? okay. Yeah, I, feet. I have, a, I have, a, I have a wild, <laughs> wild take on Frodo. I think Spurgey could be nice. Frodo. Frodo would be yeah. a good Spurgey. Yeah. yeah, Spurgey be good Frodo. Yeah. So who's who's Vigo then? Who's, who's the who's the big kind of? Who's Vigo? Who's the leading man? Who's your boyhood idol in the room? <laughs> I don't think I can say that, but uh, damn, it's a tough one. That's, That's a Billy, th- right? It's a oh, Billy. No. <laughs> <coughs> How about no? Aragon would be hard. Aragon would be hard. Vigo would be hard. Yeah. How about Gimli? <laughs> uh, Gimli. Gimli would. Be... Gimli's like the tough little dwarf. There... Yeah. There's... Middleton might be a few of these characters. Yeah, might be. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice beard. Yeah, we'll skip Gimme. How about like Aragon or Legolas or Legolas, uh someone That'd be like I Jojo. Think, I think if Jojo, yeah, uh I think if Bolz would have like a long hair, he could he could pull up Legolas because yeah. he's got like a blonde, like s- silky, silky hair. So I think if he if he if he had like a hair like under under his shoulders, he could be Legolas. Yeah. yeah. And then wh- who's the other one? Aragon? That's be the last one. Yeah, Aragon, I don't know. Boromir. Uh, he sacrificed himself. I don't know who can that be. Johnny Merrill, he likes to block shots. So I yeah, there you go. I, yeah, it could be <laughs> Boromir. He sacrificed himself. Yeah. But I right. got to get my speed up. I don't know who any of those people yeah. are. I would have to go. Uh, who? Uh, so I want to do one Game of Thrones. So Jon Snow, that's mm-hmm. his name. Yeah. I mean, he was a badass, got the playoff beard, all those things. Mm-hmm. Winter is coming. And by the way, winter is coming to Minnesota. Yeah. I know it's been like 80 degrees, but... 
Just hold on. I know. So who would be, who's Jon Snow? I would need like a like a half a year to get, to tell that. You right. know? That's, we'll that's we'll have your back. That's, we'll have okay, your back. okay. That's a tough one too. Should we do a little hockey journey? Yeah, um, hockey so you journey. you won the uh, you won the Mem Cup. It looks like I was looking at your you you seem to get better as the games get more important. So you had eight points in five games in the Memorial Cup, the leading scorer postseason three thirteen points in nineteen games. Uh, I mean, you do you really like to kind of when the stakes get higher, when people are, you know, it's getting a little more intense, uh, kind of that playoff mentality, rivalry games. Is that when you're at your best? Yeah, I mean, I like it, but the the whole season was kind of like uh, it wasn't it wasn't an easy season. I think it was like uh, one of the one of the hardest season I ever had because. Uh, not going to lie I didn't like my time here time there uh I don't think I was on the right note with the coach from the beginning but uh you know the, there were some times in the season that like I was really struggling and obviously it was my first season like uh that I wasn't home as well you know like it was first time I was out of home so it was hard like I was fortunate fortunate that I have like amazing billet family it really helped me with everything but uh you know, if I talk just about the Mem Cup, uh, literally like uh, before before the Mem Cup started, I was just like so uh, so angry and so fed up like with the coach and everything. And I came to him before the Mem Cup and I told him like, not gonna lie, I'm just gonna be honest. I went to him, I told him like, do you want to win Mem Cup? And so I was like, okay, so just let me f-ing be. And and like I played the best hockey I ever played, and I felt great. Even though I had like uh, I think I had like f- great free MCL tier during the I was playing like under injection. I was playing the best hockey of my life there. Just and wanted it. Just yeah. I mean like I was just so like in it. Like he he wasn't like giving me. He wasn't talking to me. Like he just let me play my hockey and my game and. I was playing the best hockey I could I have ever played. Did he give you the tip of the cap afterwards? Did he like shake your hand and say like I mean like yeah, we I, I just told him I told him after the season that like he made my life miserable. Like I'm like, you know, like I'm happy we won everything, like it's been great, but you made my life miserable. I told him that and you know, it it just happens. You you you're not like you meet so many coaches over the over the years, over this over the career and I just didn't I just we just didn't click. Yeah, I I say this to kids too when they're growing up as players. Like at some point the game's gonna get hard. Yeah, and you're gonna want to quit. And it's do you, do you have what it takes to get through that in a meaningful way? Because there are greener pastures after it. But the game gets hard, yeah. man. And um, was that a good experience for you in hindsight? It was. It was like uh, you know, like I get to, I cut through that and. Uh, yeah, I was really like I'm saying like I I don't even know how it happened basically because like I didn't feel I didn't feel great the whole season. I had some like moments like some month when I was like playing like you know it was just like chop 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 it was going great. Then it wasn't the playoff like one series was good. Other series like I had like seven games like whole series whole series basically without point. Then next series I had like point and half per game. You know like it was just like weird weird time weird season. And the Mem Cup was like just like a nice, nice uh, one nice thing like about it that yeah. like we ended up like I was playing great, we won it, we had a great tournament, and we ended up we ended up winning everything. So it was yeah. great. When when did you know that you like you had what it take to be an NHL player? Uh, you know, I think I think it was. Uh, It's hard cuz like my my first my first AHL season uh played a fall uh went to World War Juniors got hurt then I was out for like two and a half months come back for three games covid happened there was a covid season when uh I played half of the year back home I was playing in Czech league for uh, for half of a year then I came back had a great rest of a year when I was Playing like making points every game had like uh, multiple fights. Like I was just like doing everything. Was supposed to play my first NHL game 
the game got canceled because of COVID. So it was just like a lot of things. Then summer, the next summer, uh, I think I kind of like a little underestimated the summer. I thought it's going to go like uh, easy like it was during that COVID year. And I had the worst year, worst season of my life. I played like 60 games at 15 points. I went 40 games without a goal. I, I was like literally like, my I had I had a roommate who who was sent down to East Coast, so I was like whole whole year I was basically living alone, and it was the worst season. Like I was depressed. Like I just like was out, you know. It was just bad. Like I didn't play, I didn't play great. I didn't play much. I was couldn't score, couldn't do anything. And after that year, I was just like sitting home, and you know I had like one last one last year on my rookie rookie deal, and I just say you know like it like I'm gonna give everything this summer and uh, we'll uh, we'll see what happens so I really really gave up my everything I spent money spent spent my time to get in the best shape possible to be uh, as, as prepared as I can be and uh, and I went there and my and my and I made a team out of the camp so uh, you know it was just that summer that I really like uh, sacrifice everything to just to click for that last uh, last year of the contract because you know like I already been there for uh, four seasons right four seasons in uh, juniors and AHL and I'm like yeah you know just f- it like go for it and yeah. it worked out. So you've had a, a I mean by I think all accounts a really good camp. Do you feel the same and and um, how, how does that set you up for the rest of the season? Uh, you mean like now or that? Yeah, that you like you've had a good training camp, yeah. right? Like the yeah, yeah you're, tr- you're, good, you're trending you're to what? You maybe fifty goals this year. <laughs> Is that what we're? I mean, you got three, so f- about fifty would be good. Yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I don't think I scored fifty goals in the last seven seasons, but uh, now I mean, you know, it's just like a, you know, like last year I uh, got into the camp. I didn't feel great on the ice, and wasn't playing the way I wanted to play and uh, basically the whole year was like that that like I was playing but not the way I wanted to maybe the coach didn't uh, I didn't play like the coach wanted me to play and if you have a great training camp and you build a confidence you build like that self you you get that self-belief and uh, just a feeling that you want to play the way you want to play and you know, I, I have a good feeling now. Like I'm, I'm, I'm I think like playing pretty decent the way I want to play, and you know we'll we'll see. Like it's just a preseason. Like you know how it is. Preseason like doesn't mean much, but it can it can be it can be good, uh, really good confidence builder. Yeah, when you when you play good in the preseason, it it takes the pressure off on. Yeah, Saturday. a little bit, a little bit. Also, like of course, like when you, you know, like I got traded here. It's my first few weeks. Like yeah, first impression. Yeah, you you don't you don't want to you don't want to look like complete like slack on the ice, right? So, right. but uh, yeah, so it's it's a good confidence builder. But when the real the real season starts, like that's that's where you. How do you want to play, right? So you had a like even when you told that coach, take me off the chain, leave me alone, let me be me. What is your when you're playing your best hockey, how would you describe it? I mean, like, uh, I think I think I need to play uh, to the point where I'm not trying to exceed my uh, abilities, because uh, I can I can see myself sometimes like going to uh, you know I have a good game, score a goal for example, have a point or something you know. Uh, being hard, being first on puck, you know, just doing that four check, back check, being the responsible and these are, and sometimes like when I when this happened, I can be like, oh, I can do more, and then I try to like <laughs> stick handle, which I don't know, <laughs> and that's that just like takes uh takes me away from my game. So I think like when I'm playing bass, it's like when I go there, uh, when I'm first on pucks, or first on four check, when I'm responsible in diesel, when I'm doing good, do, uh, good stuff on PK. Uh, when I'm not overcomplicating uh, my life and my teammates' life, I'm e- uh, I'm simple in the offensive zone. I'll, I'll shoot pucks and try to make the easy pass instead of the hard pass. So, I think it's like uh, I'm not I'm not trying to be uh, like the s- the most skilled guy on the ice, and I'm just trying to play the simple, hard, uh, effective hockey. Yeah. Billy summed that mentality up the other day. 
He goes, if you're a crusher that starts to think you're a rusher, you'll turn into an usher. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's, that's right. Yeah. So I, if you're a crusher, stay in the crusher zone. Yeah, don't yeah, start yeah. thinking you're a rusher. Don't eat those cotton the, candy grapes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're eating the cotton candy grapes, you've probably lost the plot. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you have a nice family connection, too. Your first assist was from Nick Felino. <laughs> Uncle Nick, apparently. Uncle Nick, yeah. So he was just in town, or I mean, what's that been like? The the Felino family connection uh, with Marcus and everything. Yeah, it's it's been it's been good. Like uh, you know, Marcus Marcus texted me right after a trade, and first thing he said, it like, hey, it's uh, it's the cooler Felino here. So, <laughs> so uh, and then and Nick Nick texted me like like I like you you gotta be with that douchebag like. <laughs> Like, hey, is it how is it possible that I'm so much cooler than him? Yeah, so, <laughs> so uh, it's just like uh, it, it's funny. The relationship is uh, is obviously pretty amazing. So, yeah, you know, like they're they're pretty similar in in uh, many ways. Uh, Marcus has definitely better hair, but <laughs> <laughs> he does. Yeah, he, he just does. has hair. He just has hair. Yeah. <laughs> but I gotta tell Nick, Nick's hella shiny these days. Like yeah. it's been crazy. Like I was looking at him. It's like shining bright in your uh yeah. in your eyes get the sunglasses yeah out. no but uh, nick nick's been nick's been amazing you know like that my first year first year of boston like he's been he's been great he's been helpful uh you know he he took he took care of uh, of the young guys uh took care of me especially and it was uh, it was great to like experience to play with him yeah. and he's a great leader great person and you can you can say i can already tell that marcus marcus uh, is the same in many many ways and uh he sees he's, he's a he's a great teammate a great teammate and uh a great player as well so before we get yeah out of here i have one more question um it's been bugging me you said uh waking up late and having four phone calls that you missed to meet your idol was the second biggest freak out of your life what was the first biggest freak out oh the eye injury mm -hmm. yeah what was that because i heard about this eye injury that was the that was the biggest freak out yeah and so what happened that was while you're in boston right yeah it was last year yeah it was in chicago so uh i was trying to uh skate in a zone with a puck like just happens to be uh just happened like to stuck between my bit my legs and I got hit along the boards ended up on my knees and uh my teammate like pushed pushed the guy into the boards and how he pushed him he he kicked his leg back and I was on my four so the skate went right under my visor oh man and hit, oh. Me, hit me right next to the eye and uh I right away felt it's not okay and uh it was pitch black like it was so much blood in a in a quarter of a second that I couldn't see anything. So I went. Uh, so I, I like you know just like start start uh, grabbing grabbing my my eye and uh, skated to the bench. And while I was going to the bench, I was like, okay, I'm gonna uh, I'll try if I see anything. And I couldn't see anything out of that eye. It was still like so much blood. And like I think like my heart like basically stopped. Like mm -hmm. I was. I was freaked out and I get to the locker room and like uh, the trainer was like, hey, like you're going to show me like you're going to show me if, if your eye is fine. And he said like, oh, oh, it missed your eye. But I was still like freaking out. Like yeah. I was uh, until until they like, you know, they, they had to stitch it up. They had to uh, stop the bleeding it was the first like they were, it was the worst because like it was right on the eye. So they push in, they push in on the eye. So it's also a lot, lot of pressure. So they, they were trying to stop the bleeding first, and they stitch it up. And when they told me like, hey, like you gotta, you can like, uh, you can go to your spot, and you can uh, go to your stall, and you can change. Like, I literally start crying there because like it was so. I I never been more scared in my mm -hmm. life than I was there because it was. Uh, I I I thought I thought I don't have my eye. Yeah, That's that would crazy. that would scare me. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I, Jesus. I, I couldn't see anything. I literally thought I don't have my eye. That's no good. You, well, you did. You did play for the Pirates. You could have done like yeah, a I patch. Could, I could, and I it kind of <laughs> goes into your whole your whole world. Hey, I just my last question. Uh, I love your initial observations living in Minnesota. Like, what do you think of the place and what's it what it, what's it been like? And then the room. I know it's new. You've only been here a little while, and you're still meeting guys. But the Boston room was a certain way. Now you're in the room in Minnesota with the wild. What's the locker room like and what has your experience been living in Minnesota? What do you make of the place? So uh, living here uh, is definitely, I'm enjoying less traffic. 
than is in Boston. That's uh, that's a nice uh, nice change. Uh, you know, I I wasn't been able I haven't been able to see much yet. You know, I'm just a month and I was just trying to stay like at the era where I'm living. So uh, I'll I'll probably learn more as the, as the season goes. Uh, but the the traffic is really really much much better than it was in Boston. Yeah, wait till. Uh Road construction season's over, then the traffic will be even better. Yeah, you'll yeah. love it. How about the room? What? Is, what? Is, who has taken you under their wing? Uh, what do you make of some of the personalities and the players? You know, like uh, in Boston, it was. Uh, you know, like I, like I can't say a bad word about my time in Boston. I was, uh, you know, uh, um, I was, I was always gonna say that I'm grateful that I was able to play for Boston and uh, Original Six team, which is something, something. Uh, Something special, and you could tell, <coughs> you could tell that uh, there's like a certain pressure in that locker room, you know, because uh, uh, expectations expectations high. were high, super high in Boston. You know, there uh, has been pressure like two years ago. You know, that historic regular season happened last year. Uh, after that season, everyone's saying like, you know, you got to perform too after that season. So. Uh, there was a lot of pressure in that locker room to perform, and I'm sure there is gonna be another pressure this year, uh, especially what's what's going on now, you know, with Swayman and everything. Which uh, I just hope it's gonna get resolved soon, cause uh, it would be uh, a hell of a, a hell of a. Uh, it's, it wouldn't be it would be good for a league to miss to miss this player. To, to such a good goalie at the beginning of the season, so I hope it's going to get resolved soon and he's going to be able to play. But uh, you know, it's been it's been it's been great. Like you have you have guys like uh, Marshy. Marshy is a great person. He's a he's a great leader. He uh, he's very intense. He's uh, uh, he's he, he's an example for everyone. Like the way how he works, how hard he works, and he's a great leader. Here talks to everyone. You know, get. We, we two years ago we had uh, we had six six Czech guys in the locker room which was crazy, uh, you know other guys like Char uh, Charlie McEvoy he's he's uh, you know he's he's on the younger side but he's taking over he's one of the leaders past obviously I love uh, I love Charlie Coyle Charlie Coyle is great you know all the guys Brandon Carlo like I don't want to miss miss anyone but they've been great Penny Maroon when he came when when he came uh, at, the, at the trade deadline he was great Kevin Schrenker uh, all, all of the guys were great and you know I can I really can't say a bad word about my time being there but uh, how about Minnesota? What and maybe you don't even know yet, but what it what? was, uh, you know, like I was just like super happy, like uh, uh, just just the way, uh, you know, I, the trade happened, and like many guys, many guys texted me right away, like welcoming me here, like uh, you know, just like uh, a couple of words, like to when I'm coming, when I'm coming into town, like uh, how summer going and stuff. So I was very happy that like a lot of guys reached out. And you know you can tell that like uh, the guys are uh, are great. Uh, it's a great group that's uh, that's been here. Uh, they're like uh, the the core has been here for for a while, and you can tell it's a tight group. So mm -hmm. uh, you know I'm uh, I'm just happy to be part of the group, and you can tell the guys I don't know Spurgey, you know JoJo. Uh, I guess and Moose like great guys. Even the younger guys, you know Balls like those guys are like. Uh, uh, they've been here for for a little bit, and you know it's uh, you can you can tell right away that's a tight group and that's uh, that's uh, sticking together. Well, thanks for coming on, man. We appreciate you taking the time. Uh, congrats on a good camp and uh, good luck the the start of the season. Thank man. you.